Hi, my name is Stan. My name is Connie. My name is Judy. My name is Elin, and I'm a caregiver to my mother. And I care for my mother, Octavia. And I'm a caregiver for my mother. And I'm a caregiver to my husband, Art. I'm a caregiver for my wife, Anne, who's 72 years old. Basically, I've done everything for providing for both of them. I take care of my mother on the weekends. I take her grocery shopping. Not only household chores. I provide her medical care, coordination, driving, errands. Choosing meals, making meals, cleaning up. Uh, I find that uh, I take care of anything that he can't take care of. Sometimes I find balancing time a real challenge. Uh, the difficult part for me is taking me into consideration. Balancing her needs with the needs of my family, the needs of my marriage, and my own needs. Staying calm, nice, and positive. The real challenge is, of course, the distance and the moment you get that last phone call. What I love most about taking care of her is knowing that we're providing a secure and comfortable home for her. It's the time we spend together is the adventure of finding out new things all the time to try to help him stay out of pain. My name is Ed. I'm a spouse and I'm a caregiver. My name is Colette. I'm a daughter and a caregiver. I'm a caregiver and I'm a daughter. And I'm a wife and a caregiver. I'm a daughter and a caregiver. I'm a son, a nephew, and a caregiver. Hi, my name is Deborah Day, and I help manage United Way Caregivers Coalition. While caring for a loved one has its special rewards, it's a very challenging job. It can be stressful, overwhelming, and sometimes lonely. Each caregiving situation is unique, but all caregivers share the need for information and support. And that's where the Caregivers Coalition comes in. We help caregivers receive the support they need to take care of their loved ones and to take care of themselves. Caregivers who lead healthy, productive lives will be better caregivers. The most important thing to remember is that as a caregiver, you're not alone. I think the most important thing that we can do for the people we care for is to keep them busy and active. So for me, tonight's presentation is very important, and I'm looking forward to hearing our speakers speak, and uh, I'll introduce them. Carol Carney is the assistant uh, director, uh, I'm sorry, the assistant program director at the uh, Montclair Y, and has a wealth of experiences and obviously willing to share. And Judy Levy is an author and an occupational therapist. So without further ado. Well, I hope we're going to have some fun tonight as well. And maybe you might get a little workout as well tonight. I don't know if you expected that. But um, I work at the YMCA, like I said. And I've taught um, quite a few years there. I work with seniors. And I teach chair exercise classes, low-impact aerobic classes. And I find the ones that are coming to me by just doing some working out and getting that blood circulating, they're happier, they're healthier, they keep moving, they have better balance, they interact a little more. And if you think of it, range of motion is really important to keep the range of motion so that you can do your daily activities. If you lose your range of motion, it's harder to do things. For strength, if you can't walk up and down stairs, if you get weak and you can't go up and down from your chair, all those things make people younger and able to do more things and to live more independently. So I'm going to share with you. I also want to keep you healthy because you're the ones taking care of your loved ones. So think about that as well. When I'm thinking about things, some might be for your loved ones, but some might be activities that you can do. Uh, the other thing is that some of the things that everybody's going to be at different levels. So some of the things I suggest you might be able to do or you might have your care, um, you might do or your loved ones you can do with it. But basically to have fun and think of some things that we can do to be active. Um, as we're going along, if you are doing certain things um, with them, you want to check with your doctor first to make sure if they don't have any limitations. Um, and again, if they start doing an activity and they have pain or discomfort, that's a time that you don't want them to do that or if they're out of breath. 
that's another way that you'd want to stop. But I think the best activity of most people is pretty easy, and that is walking. And this time of year, it's beautiful. So some might be able to get out and get your loved ones just a little walk. And you might start with just half a block. So if they haven't walked much, it might be just taking them <coughs> half a block and coming back and seeing how they do. The next time, it might be almost around the block. But walking gets the circulation going. It works all the muscles. They're outside. You can talk to them, seeing things. There's quite a few parks around. So if you can go to a park, I know some have about a half a mile or a mile around. So that would be a good way to get them walking around in a circle in a safe way without any traffic. And you can take a, a walk and sit and look at a, the different people. Sometimes they have playgrounds and kids are playing. So it becomes outside and being active. So I think walking, you can always do, hopefully, um, as long as they're active. active. Now, what about those stairs? Do you go up and down those stairs when you see stairs? So if uh, you can have, if they're in a house that there's stairs, you don't want them to lose that ability to go up and down stairs if their knees are okay. So if you're out with them and they're able to get out, have them walk up a few stairs or down. Or if you have a set of stairs, go up it once or twice or two, two or three times. That's going to keep them also active and their legs going because walking up and down those stairs is good for the legs to keep them strong as well. So those are very simple things that you don't need any equipment, anybody can do. Um, you may also find DVDs um, and TV, lots of things on TV now that you can pull up something, maybe a chair exercise, or you can get something in a store that you can put on the TV. A sit and reach exercise class might take you through something simple if they can do that. But now I'm going to have you maybe just try a few things. And what I did do, because I know you'll probably forget them, is I do have different sheets here that you have. And they're also for you, too. I heard someone just say, uh-oh, that's for me. I'm on my computer all the time. So one page says computer and desk exercises. So I thought today, um, and you don't have to look at them now, but because you'll have a few that I'll do from each. When you go home, maybe you can pick some things that you may want to do, and you can do some of these exercises with your loved one. So the first one, I want everybody, if you can, put down what's ever in front of you. And let's see if you can just shake your hands out a little bit. Yes. <laughs> that feels good to get that circulation in those hands. And any circulation helps the brain to get um, all that. It helps the heart. Okay, now, a lot of tension comes in the shoulders as well. So a very easy one is just to bring the shoulders up, feel the tension in the shoulders, and then just drop it. This time you can breathe with so you to Breathe in, feel the tension in the shoulders, and let it go. Try again. Coming in, up, and let it go. Another way to get rid of tensions for you and for them is to pretend you're going to the dentist and open your mouth wide. Ah! Ah! And ah, and ah, very easy things. If your shoulders are okay, bring them back and just bring them back because you, you may be not standing up straight and you're just stretching and in. So you just want to bring those elbows back. That opens up the chest, makes you breathe better. In and down. Another thing that gets tight if you haven't done it lately, and it's important for, for everyone, especially for balance, is to get the neck not so tight. And if you don't move the neck, it can get tight. So when you're outside for that person for balance, if you can't see around you, you don't have as much balance because you don't know what's around you. The more visibility you have, that also helps balance and also helps safety as you're crossing the street or letting them know where they are in space. So. Let's see if you can just turn your head to one side, drop the shoulders, and back and turn your head the other side, and back. All things are done very gently. And if you want to say that to somebody, you can just say, say, no, 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 just turning your head side to side. Or you can say, yes, yes. Or now it's time to go to bed so, and go to sleep. So if you let this head um, go toward the shoulder, you're going to feel a stretch in the back of the the neck, and then the other side for the back of the neck. Stretch all the way up and stretch up. If those hands feel OK to stretch up and stretch up and down. And just breathe in and stretch up and back down. 
So quite a few of those are just very easy ones that you can do on this sheet. Um, you can go back to a little hard sitting, but if you go back again, lots of time, poor posture for everybody. And then you don't breathe as well and you can't. So if you just bring your shoulder blades back, it's great for posture. So those are a few stretches um, that are on this page that are good to do. And you can do them, you can do it with them, try to make it fun. But another thing, so I have a few tricks. Another thing is a piece of paper. So again, being interactive with them and having fun. So how about for just finger dexterity, which I was thinking of you. Um, with my piece of paper, what I have to do is crumple it up. Now I had my husband try it and he thought it was easy until I said, okay, when you get there, then you're gonna squeeze it and squeeze it. So now you have to undo all the wrinkles. And he wanted to go like this. He couldn't, he had a hard time using one hand to do it. So it's just an activity to do and just unraveling it. And if anybody has arthritis in the fingers, it's just an activity that you can do. So if you looked at a crumpled piece of paper, maybe you'll remember this is one you can do. And then you just can wave yourself if it's too hot. So a piece of paper is good for that one. Um, if you when a chair, <laughs> um, chairs, and if there are some people may not be able to get up there in a chair. So you can do certain things in a chair, like you are right now. So if you sit at the edge a little bit, can you just bring your feet and tell them, and you can make a story up, okay, now we're gonna go marching. So let's, every, you know, you're marching. So if you put words to it that something is fun, maybe they'll say, okay, just move the legs up and down. How, could you do toe raises sitting? So you can lift the heels up and down. Lift the heels up, you feel the calf, right? So if some people are sitting, again, we need to keep the people as strong as possible. This is working the calf, the ankles, right? That comes up and down. You don't have too much room, but if you just lift that leg out there, you're gonna feel a stretch the back of the hamstring, right? And then what happens if you point the toe in? You're gonna feel more. So point, if you have room, point and flex and point and flex gently <laughs> and down. I saw, ooh. So you're gonna feel the stretch here. Um, what about ankles? You wanna keep your ankles strong. So if you're right there with your ankle, see if you can do a little circle and back the other way. These are easy things, gentle things. You do a few at each time and back the other way. Let's try the other one. Get to the ankles going. So those are some things that you can do sitting. And then when they get up, you may have a hard time getting up. <laughs> and here they are trying to get up. So working the quads is really important. So if they can't get up, you rock back and forth, and then you can rock back and forth, and they can try to get up and to get up. And when they're up to work the quads, um, you can do a half a squat. So behind you, if you just squat down a little bit, and come up and maybe try eight or 10. And once they progress to that, because they're getting up and down every day, you can come around here so you, and you can try to sit down, lean forward and come up. If that gets too easy, you can come down and try it without the hands. So these are ones that are very important to keep these muscles strong, because you are, they're using them a lot. And once you also move and work out, they feel better because they some of them have a lot of energy and they, you want to get that energy out for them to do. So how about marching? You can march then in place as you're marching, as you're standing. And then to make it more fun, you could add scarves. So in my class, I found when I put something in, again, I teach you know seniors at all different levels. They're all different ages, all different levels. I have some 90-year-olds in my class as well and they do what they can. Um, but if you put something in their hand, it's visible. And then they can just have fun and they can just march with a scarf and then just moving. Or they can reach up and pat yourself on the back with a scarf. You can make circles with a scarf. You can go the other way with a scarf. You can see their eye-hand coordination up and trying to catch. Up and trying to catch. Or maybe up and try to catch the other hand and up. All these, watching your eyes are working, visibility. You can use it as pulling apart. 
So an easy little scarf, they're really strong, and then you can ask them to breathe out and stretch. You can bring it behind them and see if that works for stretching here. So scarves can be fun. Again, a scarf you could say, make the scarf disappear and see if they can disappear. Again, for the hand coordination, squeezing and then letting it go. So there's other things that you can do with a scarf for arthritis in the fingers or just shake it. A lot of energy. So scarves are kind of fun. And you can just put music on with it and just have them play and, you know, side to side and move their scarves. I try to have fun with them. Um, if you had a, um, a ball, balls, have you ever tried a, um, a tennis ball on the bottom of your feet? Wonderful. So if you, you folks or they want a little massage for your feet, you take a, a ball or a softer ball, you put it at the bottom of your foot, take your shoes off, and just roll it at the bottom of your foot. And you just roll it and roll it. You'd be surprised how good it feels um, when you use a ball. Softballs, too, are good just to have fun throwing up and down, squeezing them. If you get a stress ball, those are also fun. Um, another, just an activity that you can do. Um, the other one is um, if you did want to get into a little balance um, with your loved ones, um, because that's something they sometimes lose. Is we all lose balance as we get older. And it's important to keep strong again so that when you're walking, you have good balance. And lots of times, one problem is when we get older is people fall. And that's a big one. <laughs> and so we want to keep as strong as we can. And if we have good balance and strength, that helps. If you're going to start someone very easily with balance, I'd always have them holding on a chair. And you can be behind them, make sure that they're OK. And they can just try a toe raise up and down. So that's easy. And you can just see if they can do that first, holding on. Now, if you wanted to make that a little harder for them, hold on with two fingers and then go up and down. The next one, wiggle your fingers and try to go up and down. Third way would be coming up, trying to hold it, maybe not holding it, one, two, three, four, and down. And that's just one start. It works the calves. It works your balance. And I'll just give you one other one that would be for um, balance. If you're still in the chair and you lifted up a foot in front, and you just try to hold that. And you'd start with two seconds, one 1,000, 2,000, and come down. And then you try again, one 1,000, two 1,000. Again, I'm holding on. And then I would try maybe just a little lightly, and then down. And then the next time would be trying maybe not holding on and trying to do it a little bit longer. So those are simple ones that you can work with some balance. Um, you work one foot and then the other. You start with two seconds, see how they do. Do three seconds, four seconds. So these are some easy ways of things for all of us um, to keep stronger. Uh, another thing sometimes I do in classes, I use a ball, and you might be used, I've just ball exercises. Um, and balls even for throwing up and catching. Um, sometimes I just throw it back and forth to each other and make a game of it. How many times can we go back and forth? Can we bounce it back and forth to each other? I do that in a circle. Sometimes we'll go in a circle passing the ball. I don't know if you're doing too many balls. but um, And then if you were going to sit down, um, you can put it between your legs. And they have an inner thigh squeeze. And you can put it lower. And you do have a sheet on some of these that tell you some of the ones that you can do. I pass that out for you. You can put it lower between the ankles. And you can squeeze it there. You're going to feel all the muscles tighten up and then release. Again, you can start with four or five times. Hold a little bit and release. But balls are fun to hold and fun to do things with. Um, you can turn and stretch one way. You can turn and stretch another way. Easy. Pat your head, go behind your head, stretch it up. Just holding something in their hand, it makes it easier. If they were going to do fingers again, squeezing the ball with each finger. And then that also works your fingers again. So um, you can try bouncing a ball and catching. 
and bounce and catch. So balls can be fun. These are only a few dollars. You can get them at the dollar store. You can get them at um, different areas. They'll be out the, um, in the grocery store soon. They're usually about three or four dollars. And that's a very easy way to um, add just some fun. They so you want to make it fun. You want to make things fun. Don't do it too long and just try a few different things. Um, but balls are also fun. The last one, it might be for you or for your loved ones, but um, for strength work, the last sheet does tell a few things for some strength work. It might be too much for some of them, and you have to be careful with the bands, but I put that more in for maybe if you folks yourself want to do some. Um, you'd have to be careful they don't snap it and how much they do, so depending on the level of the person, if you're going to use bands to make sure you breathe out. But bands could be for strength and just pulling out and in. I could do biceps coming up and down with a band. So these are things, because you have to stay strong again as well, right, because you're taking care of them. I know a lot of them have a lot of energy, so you got to keep up with that energy. Um, if you went back, it could be a tricep. And just coming back a little bit, tricep is working. So bands is just another media that you can stay strong with. You can stretch up with them as well. A nice stretch up if that feels OK and release and down. Um, so these are some things that um, are easy to do. Um, you have about three sheets um, or four that show some of the things that I did do. If I was going to do a little program, I would just warm them up, make sure I get the shoulders in as a review. I would make sure you turn the head side to side. And I would just move those feet, even getting them marching like they're marching. Get that circulation going. And then if they did the squats, that would work their quads. So that's a review. And maybe the toe raises. And that might be a good start. So it doesn't have to be all those sheets. You can do about four or five exercises and uh, make it fun. And I hope this helps you. And again, consistency is good and having fun is good. And just trying to, it's so important to keep them move, moving in a positive way and get that music going and as well if you like with it. So thank you. And if anybody has any questions. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Judy Levy. I'm an occupational therapist by training. I've worked over 40 years in most kinds of facilities. I've done from pediatric with developmental training. I've done camps for kids with learning disabilities. I've done stroke rehabilitation in hospitals. I've done home care. You name it, I've done it. And then my mother got dementia, and I had never been the child of a parent that had Alzheimer's dementia. Uh, the doctor initially told me that three years. So I thought, OK, I could have three years. I had a sister that moved to Georgia, which was not really helpful. And I had a brother that was local who didn't really participate. So it became me. And I thought, OK, three years. I was the care manager, not the caregiver. And we were fortunate that we were able to have care in the house and that my mother's request to not go into a nursing home but remain at home, that we were able to be consistent in what she wished for herself until the point was that she could no longer stay at home. And I gave myself permission to say, when I can't do it anymore, then we'll, we'll do the best we can for as long as we can. So we had caregivers. And the caregiver would come on Monday. And the caregiver would go home Tuesday. And the caregiver was instructed in ADLs. They knew activities of daily living, which from the OT and me, it's eating, dressing, hygiene, toileting, self-care. So the caregiver was great. I didn't want to do that for my mother. I didn't want to be in that position. I was very happy to have somebody that would help me with that role. But caregiver A would go home. And then what does caregiver B know to do with my mother when caregiver A had left? So the therapist in me wanted to create some kind of framework so that there would be an activity that would be consistent from caregiver A to caregiver B. The daughter in me wanted the activity to be making cupcakes so that she could incorporate it with my grandchildren. The therapist in me wanted to assess 
whether or not it worked, did it work, did it not work, what did you do that made it work, how do you change it so that it'll work if it didn't work. So my mother had dementia for 10 years, and she died a year ago, January, and she was an exceptionally fortunate woman. She lived a good life, she was sick, she was still happy, and she had care all the way through. She was a fortunate woman. So I feel good about what I did, and I wrote down ideas, which I will speak about later. But I've gotten active with things like the um, Alzheimer Foundation of America. And what this is a brochure that they put out quarterly, and I did pass out um, a handout, which you should have gotten that it's a free magazine, it comes out quarterly, and it's just, it's a really nice magazine with really good resources. There's a card that um, Donna was kind enough to print out that allows you to sign up for it, and if you sign up and remit it to the address that's on it, they'll sign you up to receive free magazines, which it's really, it's a nice magazine. Um, and you can go online to look at, a, I think it's um, AF, a.com, Alzheimer Foundation of America.com, and you can see the magazine online too if you prefer to do it that way. But what I wanted to do today is to give you some examples of activities and show you how I changed them and the therapist and me, how I set them up. The one thing with someone that has cognitive loss that I think is important is to be consistent in how you approach somebody that there be a constancy to the day because if anybody's been around anyone with dementia, you know that there is no normal day and that Monday can be different from Monday afternoon. There's no logic. But as far as approaching a person with an activity, you want to set it up the same way. So my mother had a beautiful glass table and we would work at her glass table and I was really stupid because I didn't pay attention because she would look and she would go, wow. I have such nice shoes. Wow, look at the carpet. She wasn't paying attention to the activity. She was looking through the glass table to see what was going on with her shoes. Took a while, I put a tablecloth on the table. <laughs> Sounds so simple, took a while. I got there, but what the tablecloth did is it triggered when we were gonna do an activity. So she had breakfast, she got dressed, she got set up, and she knew the minute that the tablecloth went onto the table, we were gonna do an activity. So the activity was done pretty much after breakfast because that was her best time to pay attention. We lasted 15 minutes for an activity when she got sick of the activity and she lost interest in it. We, cho we went to another activity. So to follow on what you were speaking about, some of the activities were sedentary where she would sit, depending on how she was feeling. Some of the activities when she had that energy and she had to get up and go, we changed to exercises that were busier so that she was more physically active. And when we did about an hour of it, then we went on to other things that we were gonna do during the course of the day. But my concern with an activity was that the aid was not instructed in activity. They were instructed in ADLs. So they weren't taught how to do an activity with somebody. So that's what my intention was. And what I wanted to show you, and I've put some things on the table, um, to give you some ideas of what it is that I did. Um, beads. I like beads. I like these. They're big, they're bright. The colors are primary colors. If somebody still has the ability to determine colors, these are kind of neat. They're not mauve and pinks or whatever, they're red, they're yellow. You can tell the difference. So if somebody has a cognitive loss, you're going back to primaries because it's easier to know primary colors. So I had letters of the alphabet, but they're also red and yellow. So I don't have to use them as a letter, I can use them as a color to match. So it's another activity. I don't have to be caught up in the letters of the alphabet as much as, here, mom, help me find things that are red. Can you get me something else that's red? What kind of fruit would you eat that's red? And my husband's comment to me, he's an accountant, his comment to me was, isn't that demeaning? Isn't that juvenile? Don't you feel terrible doing that? And I said, she likes it. 
If she didn't like it, she would have told me that she didn't like it. But not only did she like it, it was easy to understand. It was a simple one to two step instruction. And if she, she was with me, that was what she wanted. So really, all she wanted was my attention. And she got it. So we did things. We drew a circle. Here's a red crayon. I happen to, to really like these crayons. I don't know if anybody's seen them. They're by a company called Melissa and Doug. And what I like about them is that they're triangles and they don't roll off the table. So the other thing that I like is that it's in a container. So some of the activities that we did is we took things out of a container. And part of the activity was putting things back in the container. So an activity can be playing cards where my mother was a bridge player, and then she became a gin player. And then we did war. And then we got down to finding the letter, the number four of all the different suits. We sorted them by suits. We did red versus black. We, I, was, I was nasty, and I would mix up all the cards and have her sort them by color. We would go from king down to ace or ace up to king, or find all the number 10s in the deck of cards. I could do like 100 activities with a deck of cards. So it's not just bridge. It's what your loved one is capable of doing. And if they're not capable of doing it, you'll know, because they'll lose interest in what it is that you're talking about. Now, I brought a ball in, too, because a nurse approached me at a meeting that I was at, and she said to me, I want to play catch with my father, and every time I go to throw a ball at him, he squints. And I said, you have to evaluate what you're doing with an activity. So if I take a ball and I go like this to go throw the ball to my mother and she squints, two things are happening. It's either coming at her too fast for her to focus, she doesn't like it, and she can't understand what to do with it. It's moving too fast through space. So one of the things that was mentioned before is bouncing the ball to somebody. If I bounce it, it's slowing down the amount of time it takes to get to somebody. It allows them to get ready to catch it. Or I can roll it across the table to have somebody catch it. If I want to make it more difficult, I can put two pieces of masking tape on the table, and they have to roll the ball through the road to the other side of the table. So nobody says that you have to play catch with catch. Now, some of the other balls that are here, they're littler, so they move through space faster. You can slow it down with a balloon. You can slow it down more so with a, bless you, with a helium balloon. So when you look at an activity and it works good, if it doesn't work, change it. Step back, look and see what it is with an activity and whether it's working for your parent or your loved one or your client. And if it doesn't work, change it. So I will tell you that one day I decided I was going to have ask my mother. It was the Jewish holidays, and I was going to ask my mother about chicken soup. So I said to my mother, and I didn't think this through, how do you make chicken soup? Now, she had always made chicken soup. And she looked at me, and she said, bones. And I said, anything else? And she said, bones. And I thought, all right, I blew it on this one. What I should have done is I should have thought a little bit ahead of time, cut out pictures of all the ingredients that go in the soup, some of the ingredients that don't go in the soup, and asked her to choose what things she would put in the soup. So I evaluated the activity. What did I do? I made a mistake. I didn't think about it ahead of time. I evaluated it because my mother couldn't do it successfully. And I changed it so that the next time we did a little bit better. We've done things like we take silverware, and I take the containers that hold knife, fork, spoons, empty everything out of it put a knife in, a fork in, a spoon in, give her all the rest of the silverware, and she has to sort it and put it away. So activities, when you talk about things, don't have to be expensive. 
They can be things that are in your house that you can have. I really, I don't like to spend money because what works on Monday doesn't work on Tuesday. But some of the things that we have in the house, is she had thread, thank you. So what was nice about the thread was the color. And in addition to the color, we could stack them. And she could stack them, and I could stack them. And we could see who made the higher stack, and we could keep a competition. So it doesn't have to be thread for thread's sake. It's just a thing to do something with. So this is activities with things. But on a day-to-day -day basis, the other thing with someone with cognitive loss is decision making. So if you want to go outside and go for a walk, that's lovely. The decision of what to wear to go outside is an activity. Let's look outside. What's the weather like? Do you see the sun? Is it cold? Let's open the window and feel outside and see what it feels like. Do you think we need a jacket? Here's a sweater. Here's a jacket. Which one would you like to wear? So that they can't make a mistake, but they're still making a decision. So you're still respecting the person's individuality to choose what they want and make the decision so that you're not making it all for them. And the, the other thing that I believe is that you should write down how the activity works so that when you go off duty and somebody else is coming on, there's a framework for the next person to follow. Does anybody have any questions on that? I think what you're really talking about, and I'm going to just summarize it into one word, two words, caregiver burnout. Mm -hmm. So one, one of the things that I did not want to have for caregiver burnout is you're, you're exhausted. If, if you've taken care of somebody for 10 years, you've, like, you, you know, you've had it. So what's nice about an activity is success. And part of it is, is for the caregiver to determine what's successful for the person so that you can say, man, I did a good job. If it's putting together a sandwich and somebody can put together a sandwich, that's a good job. Nice job. You assembled that, the bread, the meat, the cheese, whatever it is that you're putting together. You did a great job. Thanks for helping. So if the caregiver is recognizing what it is that they're doing, it's helping, in my mind, to prevent the burnout of it only being, oh, man, I have to do another meal. And it's like, d don't look at it that way. Look at it more that this is what we have to do. And it's, it's stepping back a little bit to look at activity during the day for the caregiver to feel successful and for the individual to be successful. The other thing that you mentioned is the fact that your father sits in a chair all day. And that's, that's a really big problem, is sitting. I mean, for health issues as far as blood clots, as far as breathing, as far as just whole body deterioration, and the caregiver's ability to move the person from point A to point B, it's really compromised by somebody sitting all the time. So the thing that got my mother intrigued to be moving was I got a CD. Not, it's not a CD. It's a CD player that plays um, music, and we got music from the 1940s because the music triggered music that she liked. So we danced. Five minutes, Mom, I'm going to turn on the timer on the oven, and we're going to dance for five minutes. When you hear the bell, you can sit down again. So that you're giving a framework for what you're going to do. And it's OK. You can sit. I'll put on the sports, and you'll do it. But we're going to take five minutes. I need you to give me five minutes. The timer goes off. You're free to do what you want. See if something like that works. It might be helpful. The, the one thing that I, I'll, I'll just summarize by saying is that I don't think there's anything harder in the world than being a caregiver. I don't think there's anything more tiring, more depressing than being a caregiver. And if you can say that you did a good job, aren't you special? And it's wonderful. So some of the activity that you want, you want to use it to reinforce with the other members of your family so that you can be happy about something. And encourage, I had a hard time, but encouraging my grandchildren to come to visit my mother. And we did video. My, my son is much more tech 
advanced than I am. We did video um, so that they would have a memory of the kids with my mother later. So it's wonderful. Take a picture with the person. Go hug your parent and take a picture of the two of you together because time is really short, even though it seems like it's forever. She wanted to know how I instructed a caregiver to do what I wanted her to do. So here you go. Will you stack the yellow blocks for me? So I would do that directly with the caregiver with my mother. Okay. And then I would say, here, set it up and, and you, you do it. it. Oh. So and then we wrote it down. Oh, okay. And if it worked, fine. My chicken soup didn't work. I had to do it all over again. It, you can work for 40 years. It doesn't matter. You're still human. You're still making a mistake. You make a mistake. No harm, no foul. Just change it and go on. So to train the caregiver is to do the activity with the caregiver, just like you would teach a kid how to tie their shoes, and then step back, let them do it. Nice job. You did a great job. I'm really impressed with how well you did. And if it didn't work, you make a note saying, God, she hated that. <laughs> OK? Don't do that. It didn't work. She hated it. Or she hates to get her hands dirty. You know, don't put her to do an activity that's doing certain things because she doesn't like the sensation of that. You'll be doing the best thing in the world. Her hands are going to get dirty. Like you using lost it. Silly putty or something. Absolutely. The problem, I'll take silly putty, where it was just mentioned to you, silly putty is that someone with cognitive loss may not know that they shouldn't eat it. So okay. you have to be careful with some things like that. So yeah. I have string here. This is the other thing that we did, is we would thread beads, and she would, and I would, and we would do necklaces. And we would determine who could put the most beads on their string. Or we would copy. I did an orange. She had to do an orange. You can just have a good time. Enjoy your parent. Do I have any more male-oriented activities? Um, it depends what level somebody's at, what kind of activity someone will do. So if you want to do baseball scores, I had somebody that was telling me that they always took their father to a baseball game, and then it became overwhelming because there were too many people around. So we had a discussion about going to a t-ball game to see what children's activities were going. So they were still going to a ball game, but they were going at a lesser level that the pressure was a little bit different. You can go to high school baseball games. Um, music still is good. Going to the library is still good. I like walking at the mall, and there's always children playing in the mall. You can go watch some children's. Um, but I think of sports when I think of men, and I that you could still take a golf club and go in the backyard and hit a ball, smack a divot, I mean, hit some bushes. It's, it, it's still, it, it, it's not male versus female as much as what's important to that person. If it's reading the newspaper, if you want to have a newspaper article and then you're going to discuss it, or if that's impossible, if you take the newspaper article to cut out certain letters of the alphabet out of the newspaper. Let's look in the newspaper and find all the letters that are A. So that the newspaper may still be important, but the ability to read and understand the newspaper may be gone. It, does that find out what's important? So basically, what, what we're all saying is to keep your loved one busy, to step back and assess to see whether or not it's working appropriately, if you're not getting the reaction that you think you should be getting, don't do it anymore. Step back, change it a little bit, go back and try again. If it doesn't work, don't do it. That's it. If it doesn't work, don't do it. If somebody says that they can't deal with something, you have to respect the fact that they may not be able to deal with it. And then you get a situation where somebody just hugs and just adores their grandparent to the level that they can, and it's like, how wonderful. What a good job. Okay, Thank you so much.